Hey YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. Happy that you're here today. You have seen the person I'm going to talk to in a second in the thumbnail already, and you have read his name. Yes, it's Vernon. I'm really looking forward to the interview to talk about testing all variants of the current situation of testings that we see. And of course, we're talking about his latest contribution to the software testing community. What this is all about? Enjoy the interview. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Okay, so hey, welcome YouTube and welcome my community to today's interview. I mean, I've done already introduction video and you know who I'm talking today. It's Vernon Richards. I'm really happy that you're available for me talking about all things about testing. Unfortunately, we missed one person today. It's Nicola. She cannot be here with us tonight, but that's okay. Um, she's also fine with us talking just the two of us about the latest content creation or the latest content piece that you created for the testing community. But I would like to stop talking and would like to give you, Vernon, the opportunity to talk and to introduce yourself because I I don't hope that people don't know you because you're like really, from my perspective, a really well-known person in the testing community and the stage is yours. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Thanks <laughs> for having me on. Um, yes, yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Vernon Richards. I'm based in the UK. I'm in a city called Leicester, one of those annoying UK cities that is not pronounced how you think it would be when you see it <laughs> written down. And I've been in the software testing and software development industry for over 20 years now, which is a, which is a long time. Started out testing video games. That's why I've got this hoodie on. Oh, nice one. Um, <laughs> yeah. And started out testing video games. And then over the years, you know, that evolved into working on e-commerce sites, working in the finance sector, even had a short stint working on a Formula One team. That was a lot of fun. Mm. And then that evolved into um, consulting and doing lots of freelancing. So got saw lots of various different companies in different stages. And then more more recently, the last, I don't know, five years or so, started to, you know, start to share my ideas about how I see the software testing world. And that eventually led to the book that I wrote with my <laughs> good friend Nicola, Nicola Lindgren, and so that's what that's what I'm here to talk about here with uh, Daniel. So uh, yeah, that's me. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, before we go uh, and and uh, I, I will ask you some questions about the book and like why you wrote the book and stuff. Like I would like to like, have some some one or two warm up questions because I mean there's there's a topic going around these days and so what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word AI? <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind is polarization so i think there are some people who are extremely excited about it and some people who are extremely unimpressed mm -hmm. and cynical about it and to be honest i think i think i might be a, a combination of both i i find it very very interesting and very very exciting and imagining what it could do and at the same time trying to be wary of because mm -hmm. we we're all we're all nerds here. We're all been in the software development space, and we're all used to hearing hype about different technologies and tools and this that, and the other. Mm -hmm. So, some of those promises will be a little bit um, fanciful. But mm -hmm. I think the trick for us, is particularly as software testing specialists and software quality specialists, is to find out where does the truth lie and how can we mm -hmm. exploit the tool and technology to our um, advantage. So that's what I think about when it comes to AI. Mm -hmm. We should nice. we shouldn't ignore it. We should explore it and try and understand yeah. it. Yeah, that's good. And um, I mean, I'm I'm on the same page. I mean, I'm I'm more on the on the hype side of things at the moment because I mean, I have tried many of the tools already on the channel, and also like in my in my spare time, I try to to experiment with the stuff that's coming out again. Um, so I I'm really looking forward, but I'm I'm completely with you. Look, like to explore the features, like you know that yeah. what the tools can do for us as software testers or developers or product managers, whoever is using AI technologies, and and I think this is really like changing the way we're going to work. Um, I'm not. I don't think that it's going to replace anyone in 
hopefully a couple of years. <laughs> let's see <laughs> until some robots will take over. So let's see that one. But um, so, okay. but how do you see like the, the current AI hype affecting testing already? Because when I talk to people and also with the community and also looking some of the comments that I receive on my on my channel is that people are getting like really afraid of like, hey, I am going to replace by AI or is there something that I should learn particularly regarding AI? So what do you think? Like, do you see that like it's impacting testing already or do you think we are still in an early stage? Mm, I, th I think it's still early stages, mm. but I think, I think, I mean, there are people more well-versed in this topic than me. Let's let, let me say that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I tend to take my cues from people like Dr. Tariq King mm -hmm. Um and people of that nature who are really well steeped yes. and well versed in this, but I do think I do think there is you're starting to see it impact the industry, and it reminds me of the same way that when GUI automation tools really started to <laughs> lift off, it's a similar kind of deal. There, it's like oh, exactly. you know, we're going to replace people or this particular kind of work, and I think it's true in so in so far as if you are doing the kind of work that a mm -hmm. GUI automation tool can replace, or mm -hmm. if you are doing the kind of work that an or um, a, a gen AI tool can replace, then you can and probably will be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the other work that currently, as we're talking, isn't is beyond the capabilities of AI to replace, then mm -hmm. you will be fine. But I think that space is is increasing. Yeah. And the, the cliche that you hear people say all the time is you won't be replaced by a human, uh, an AI tool. You will be replaced by a human who's leveraging an AI tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the future is going to lie. Nice. So yeah. I would advise people to get comfortable with the tools, understand the underlying technology to some degree. You know, there's plenty of resources out there. So go and check those out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would I would not be afraid of it. And, even you know, I would challenge people if you're going to be a cynic then at least be a cynic for the right reasons like go and do the research mm -hmm. and understand the technology understand yeah. the, li the limitations and try and rebut things in a way that makes sense instead mm -hmm. of only relying on you know when you've been in the industry for 20 years and just saying well i've seen this kind of thing happen before and it and it sucked with this other technology so it's probably going to suck with this technology mm -hmm. there might be some truth in that but if you actually do the legwork and satisfy your curiosity you know be a good tester go do the research get the evidence present the evidence i think that's mm -hmm. more powerful and the same as if you're excited about it like go and explore what makes it good and where is it not so useful mm -hmm. and then you can speak with a little bit more you don't have to dial down your excitement but you can talk you can just sprinkle in a little bit more realism mm -hmm. into what you're saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's a good one. I'm completely with you. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm also talking to various people in the industry and also like in 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 other companies right now. And the thing is that I'm afraid of that the same thing that you just mentioned is going to happen at some of us. That the when when GUI, GUI automation tools came in and say, hey, let's automate all the things. We don't need testing anymore. And now with like people in power or people in, in charge of people think that way because now they see okay now we have an ai we have gen uh, chat gpt gen ai whatever's out there now is we have agentic ai and we can replace testing and because they don't know how real testing has been done so that's i think that's the biggest problem i see at the moment that people don't know what they're talking about but we have to we have to be at the same speed of of um, of, of time again and to, to work it out and to to see like and to yeah to deliver the benefits of good quality you know asking the critical questions doing exploratory testing and all this kind of stuff but yeah, yeah let's see how this goes yeah <laughs> I, th I, I think you're right i think it's too big to ignore yeah. so i think that is more true. of us that become more well versed mm -hmm. in what this tool is are we talking about machine learning are we talking yeah. about ai if we're talking about ai what kind of ai are we talking about the more you can start to get familiar with these topics mm -hmm. god willing the the more persuasive and impactful the overall conversation gets and the quality of that uh, irony, the quality of that conversation increases. And then hopefully we can realize yeah. the benefits of that. 
Absolutely. Okay. Nice. I just wanted to hear your thoughts and I think maybe the community as well. So, but now let's, let's trash away all the AI stuff. Let's talk about <laughs> the latest content contribution that you have done together with Nicola. And yeah, we talked about AI, but now we're talking about your book, which is called The Software Tester's Journey. And basically, my first question is like, what made you both writing that book, actually? Like, how how it's did all... you come up on this, like the story? What what made you think about it? It's all Nicola's fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Nicola. A few, a few today, years but... <laughs> ago. Well, yeah, Nicola, Nicola's written, I think this is the third. Yeah, I think it's a third book. book. Mm -hmm. Nicola has written on this topic at least and so one of her previous books is um how to get into starting... software testing or starting, how software to get testing. Software testing. Yeah, yeah. starting your software testing career and so she's written this book many people bought it awesome um and she started getting a lot of questions okay I've started my career I've been doing this for you know I don't know six months 12 months 18 mm -hmm. months whatever now what do I do like what do I do mm -hmm. next and at the time I was I was knee deep in this writing challenge, which I I keep repeating called mm -hmm. Ship Thirty. So I was writing a lot, mm -hmm. and she saw that she's like, "Hey, I'm writing this this book to answer some of the questions that I've got from the first book. Would you like mm -hmm. to write it with me?" Easy, if you've met Nicola, easy yes. If you've read the book, easy yes. So that's you know that's what I did. That's how we got started. Nice. So Nicola and I, you know, paired up, and you know, the rest is history. That's cool. I mean, I know how to, how much work it is to to write a book, but like, how, how long did it, did it take you to write the book? Actually, like, what was your way of writing? You had like a plan, or is it really like you have like chapter by chapter, or I don't know what what was your approach basically? I'll be I'll be extremely honest and extremely candid. Like, we could have released this book last year if I hadn't completely lost my mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't I don't even know what happened. I just. I think I, I don't know what happened. I got distracted. I did not, I wasn't focusing on the book okay. in the way that I'd started when we, because I think we started writing it. Sure. We started writing it last summer, mm -hmm. summer of 2023. Yeah. So we started writing it then and then we lost all momentum. And then, and that was, that was pretty much 99% me at least. And then this year, you know, Nicholas come back and said, Hey Vern, look, are we, you know, we've got so, because we wrote a lot. Like we've mm -hmm. wrote a bunch of it. She's like, hey, we're so close. Do you have the energy to finish it? And I was like, yes, yeah. you know, snapped out of it. It's like, right, let's go attack the rest of the chapters that I had to had to do. Then we went to this review stage where we were just, you know, mm -hmm. we started off, we started off in uh, writing in Google Drive actually. Mm, okay. And then we and then we transitioned into into Lean Pub. They they have an mm -hmm. integration with Git, so you can start writing in there and just plain text mm -hmm. markdown, very good. And then we're like, okay, we think we're done. And then we just targeted, I think it was October, the date in October. And we said, right, let's just get this thing out. Yeah. And we managed to make it. And it, it looks yeah. fantastic. I, I love the cover. You know, we, we yeah. played around in tools like Canva and Notion and Git, yeah. you know, GitHub, all these things. Yeah, published on Amazon as well. It's very cool to have. It's, it's very, slight tangent. It's very cool to see something you create mm -hmm. available for people to. Exactly to buy and consume and then you see people consume a friend of mine bought a physical copy from amazon and he sent me a picture of mm -hmm. him and his daughter like wave it i was like wow <laughs> this is a, amazing so yeah, yeah very cool that feels weird right mm. yeah cool so so um so you said that nicola came up with the idea on like because she got a lot of questions regarding her first book and like so yeah. the target audience of the book is then for people like let's say are just started in software testing or is there something specific like if for, for those of who are now listening to to the podcast or to the videos like is mm. like who should be like in the target audience because you're covering like really great topics which we come to in a second um so so what do you think like would be like a good fit for people uh looking for the book it's <laughs> it's the cliche there's something in there for everybody but there genuinely is something in there for everybody if you if you have if you're asking yourself that question, mm -hmm. having been a software tester, software quality specialist of whatever mm -hmm. flavor, it's saying to yourself, well, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. What direction can I take this, this career in? I've built up these skills. I've got this experience. What can I do mm -hmm. next? Then there is, I am 
fairly confident there's something in there for you. So if you if you're on the individual contributor side, what should mm -hmm. you do there? How how do you manage up? How do you deal with your managers? Do I even stay in testing? We we kind of explore that a bit. Freelancing, we cover that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you know something that's particularly relevant. I mean, I think it's all extremely relevant for the situation the market is in right now. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a job hunting situation um, section in there, chapter in there, which I think could be quite helpful for people. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think it covers the full gamut. If you've just started, then you've got the book that Nicola wrote previously, mm -hmm. and then once you've been in that role for maybe six months at least, I think there's something in this book that will that will help you, and is going to be relevant to you. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you just yeah. mentioned it, like the things that you're mentioning. I, I mean, I, I just made some notes. Like you, you write about the importance of networking, like why why it's important mm -hmm. to have networks, the ins the ins and out of job hunting. Right. I mean, that's yep. I mean, I, I would say it's a perfect timing to release such a book. Right. I mean, now looking at the industry, what's going to happen, like layoffs and people like, you know, uh, looking for jobs. And it was completely different a couple of years ago. Right. So that people could decide yeah. where to work for. And and also like what I really like I loved about is like to like to mistakes in making a promotion. That's also really cool. Like, you know, to see like career advice is what people can do in order to get like the next step in their career, either internally yeah. or externally. But also, which I, I'm a really big fan of, is like to to talk about feedback, like to receiving and giving feedback in the current yeah. situation of your of your job, because I think that's that's really crucial in order to like yeah get to the next step, basically. Yeah, all of these things. I, I mean, I I have this opinion that the the hard skills will get you a job, mm -hmm. and the so called soft skills, the interpersonal skills. They will keep you in the job yeah, absolutely. and they will 100%. help you excel in the job. And 100%. you shouldn't neglect either, either one of those skill sets mm -hmm. at all. I don't think mm -hmm. they apply regardless of whether you go deep down the in, um, individual contributor track side of things, or if you go down the people manager leadership side mm -hmm. of things, I mm -hmm. think they, I think they apply. And so, all of the topics that you that you mentioned from the book around networking, managing up promotions, mistakes around that. I think I I think they're going to be we try we try to make them as evergreen as possible mm -hmm. because these mm -hmm. things are going to be relevant regardless of what the external yeah. job market is doing, regardless of what tools are there. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be humans working with humans trying to figure out if this if this product or service is good enough to put in front of mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. human so we try to we try to make it as evergreen as possible yeah that's perfect and i'm looking also at the at the topics that we just talked about i think that's also what you meant before it's like it doesn't matter like how long you're in the job there's always something that you can you know to repeat again you know to to try to practice again because sometimes you have a focus focusing on building up a network i mean or you're like let, let's say 15 years in the job in the same job in the same company you would like to step out of your comfort zone and to go to, to 